Hey guys, it's Michelle Pippin with WomenWhoWound.com and our official blog over at BeMichellePippin.com. And today I'm here for a special training. It's a bonus training, one of the trainings I do every week for my Women Who Wow members. But I'm doing it today. I'm opening up to the public because I... I want more people to have this information. What we're gonna to cover today are the four freedoms that you want in your business and exactly how to create them, right? So we're gonna be talking about that. But in honor of Independence Day, I'm wearing my Free Spirit shirt and I'm opening up this training um, beyond the Women Who Out community so more and more women, particularly, can grab hold of the simple truths that build your business and build the freedoms that you want. And so if you guys wanna share this it's absolutely public so you can share this um, wherever you uh, want to share it I'm actually trying to look on our page to share it myself onto my own page but I am super excited to dig into this today um, before I begin I know that freedom is not free and so I want to um, I want to thank our reservist women who wow members I want to thank our um, veteran Women Who Wow members, and I want to thank, I'm not sure if we have any active duty Women Who Wow members, but I want to just say thank you because you guys are um, doing something that I know that I'm unwilling to do, and you've signed up for a shift that I have been unwilling to sign up for, and so I just want to thank you guys um, for that. Uh, we are getting ready to get started, and I'm just trying if I can figure out how to share this, I will, and it seems as if I cannot, so I'm gonna move on. So if you guys wanna share it to my page or into the Women Who Wow group, please do. Um, our topic, the four ultimate freedoms in a business and how to create them and how to enjoy them. Um, I don't wanna focus today on the freedoms uh, that we have as Americans or Canadians uh, or Australians, but I wanna talk about the freedoms that we could have, uh, the freedoms that we really want, the freedoms that we should have as an entrepreneur. And these four freedoms, I'm just gonna list them out, right? Typically people talk about like money freedom and time freedom. And I think that's a little bit simplistic, right? Although we do wanna have the money that we want um, in order to live the life that we wanna live and we wanna have the time um, available to enjoy the life that we've created. We, um, I have zero desire to have a lot of money and no time to enjoy it. And even, uh, you know, in less desire to have a lot of time and no money to enjoy it. And and so um, it's important to really kind of define uh, even more the freedoms that you want in your business. And these four freedoms are at the core of that time and money freedom that people say that they want. So the four freedoms are the freedom to work with who you want right? The freedom to work with who you want. This is the freedom to uh, fire clients that are no longer a fit, the freedom to cherry pick your clients, the freedom to work with people that you enjoy, right? The freedom to, to work with people that you would call friends. So working with who you want. The freedom to charge what you want, right? We're going to get into this because this does not always mean that you're charging high prices. The freedom to work when you want and the freedom to work how you want, right? So we're going to get into those. I'm going to talk about each of those specifically. But these freedoms are all, and this is really the point I want you to grasp, and then we're going to dig into the three ways to create this. But um, all of these freedoms, in fact, every freedom in business is built on the back of one thing. Like there's just one secret behind each and every freedom that you would um, have or want in your business. And that one thing that creates all this freedom is demand. When you have more demand than supply in your business, that is when you have total freedom. So hey Joan, hey Alice. Uh, thank you Alice for the compliment on my makeup. I do love doing my makeup. Um, hey Debbie, Lindsay, and whoever else just joined us. So the demand thing is just the way it works, right? It just is the way it, it works. So as a place to start, I want you to consider going back to a few of the trainings that I've done recently um, that are waiting for you on the membership site. So there's a few trainings that if you're uh, watching this and you are a member, you want to go back and look at because it really gets to the heart of building demand. We're going to go further into it today, but you don't want to miss these like kind of fundamentals. So there's five components for manufacturing authority in your niche, positioning for ultimate profit, 
rapid list growth, creating an amazing and engaged and passionate and profitable following, next level branding you can take to the bank, and seven keys to absolute autonomy. All of these are trainings that are already waiting for you on the member site. And so if you have missed those trainings, then you want to go back and, and uh, look at those because it is um, all of these things are about building demand. And then also you want to stay on this training so you can learn exactly how. Um, but those are all waiting for you on the membership site. If you're not a member, I don't know how to say this in a way that isn't uh, rude, but you should be, right? You should be a member. If you are a driven women entrepreneur, a seriously driven women entrepreneur, then you need to be a Women Who Wow member. So you can message me at m.me backslash Women Who Wow. Um, I have a special gift for people who are joining today. Moving on. Today we're talking about freedom, which is freedom through demand. Demand is the key to the freedom that you want. When there's more demand uh, for what you sell than supply, your freedom goes up. You get to choose your clients and fire the ones who aren't a good fit or feel clunky or just no longer feel absolutely right for any reason. You get to charge what you want and not just what you think you could get, right? So <clears throat> this doesn't always mean charging more, by the way, right? In 2013, I never sold anything for less than $1,000. Anything. Why? Because I couldn't afford to. I didn't have the reach that I needed. And so when I considered uh, what I was going to sell, I knew like what my reach was. And so I would kind of, you know, build out what I would provide um, in order to make it uh, reach a $1,000 price point. And so it's... Today, uh, with Women Who Wow, um, I've priced Women Who Wow at a ridiculously low rate. I have programs that sell for $247, $197. Like, I still have my high, you know, higher price programs, but um, I, my, price actually has gone down as my reach has gone up. So when I say you get to charge what you want, it's not always like you just get to charge more and more money. Um, what you can do is create leveraged income where you charge less money with a lot of people, but you don't go broke, right? There's a lot of people who are recommending this for uh, anyone starting out. And they're saying like, oh, you know, sell it for cheap or, you know, whatever. And what happens is they are working so hard and they're making so little and they burn themselves out. And I knew not to do that. So my prices were actually um, higher for group programs back in the day than they are now. So, but with, with higher demand and, and, um, when there's more people wanting access to you than you are allowing in or um, than you have time to serve, then it gives you um, it gives you the freedom to charge what you want and to also leverage your expertise. Um, but when the demand is high, you also get to choose when and how you work. That Not only just the days and hours, but also the location and the flow, what kind of work that you do. This was the most important aspect of business freedom for me, right? Um, I, to be able to work around my, my own priorities was huge for me. It was exactly why I quit my job, right? I, I wanted to be a full-time mom. I didn't want anything in um, hindering me in that department. And so I shook off my, my full-time job and figured I'd make money somehow from home, right? Everybody around me was panicked because back then, you know, you didn't really know a lot of people working from home. Um, you heard like rumors of it, <laughs> but you didn't know anybody actually doing it. And so um, it was a, it was like a big risk, right? And so um, anyway, so I quit my job. It was my why to have this kind of freedom in my business. And my freedom has continued to go up when my demand went up. But a lot of people are talking about freedom these days, right? There's a lot of people talking about location freedom, being able to work where you want. Um, I used to think that's not particularly... Um appealing to me um, because I don't love to travel. But the truth is I get to work exactly where I want, uh, right here from home and in, in rural America. I don't have to live in a big city. I don't have to hold events in a big city. In fact, uh, the most recent very small uh, event that I had, you know, here we are in, in Chesapeake, Virginia, and um, these four women who, one was from Maryland, one from Tennessee, one from Canada, and one from New York, they realized they had first met in an ashram in India. <laughs> And then reunited at a women's in Chesapeake, Virginia. So it's just super cool. But, um, you know, these kind of uh, freedoms in business, it took me a while to realize and to grasp the fundamental truth that freedom um, is absolutely and fundamentally tied to 
demand. How much demand is there for your work? How much demand is there for your voice? How much demand is in the market for whatever it is that you offer, right? When you build demand for your work, you build a foundation for freedom in your business because, and I just want to, um, I guess, twist the camera on you. Um, when there is no demand or too little demand for whatever it is that you do, however you do it, you start waiting on your clients. Like things are kind of uh, weird, right? Um, you start waiting with like bated breath and clenched teeth and crossed fingers that they're going to say yes. Um, and not only say yes, but mean it like and follow through and pay. When there's too little demand, you there's a temptation to work with clients who are not ideal. By the way, this doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve them, right? It's out of integrity to work with clients who are not ideal for you. When there's too little demand, you start to discount your prices and hold your tongue when you know that you should put your client's feet to the fire, but you hold your tongue because you're thinking, oh no, like what if they get mad and don't pay me next month? What if they don't follow through, right? When there's too little demand, we get desperate and our energy is kind of frantic. We have no peace. We have too little confidence and it feels, our business starts to feel like a ball of pressure instead of something that you lovingly and diligently and deliberately created. So how exactly do you build this demand? There is a th simple three-step process that I want to um, unpack for you guys today, right? And for new people, hey Sharon, when you are tempted to think that what I'm saying is so simple that you're tempted to overlook it, right? And think I know this stuff already, that's when I want you to really, really dig in, make it your own, and put it into action, right? Because what is simple gets done. And there's a lot of gurus, I guess, and thought leaders who have made a lot of money, but they've caused a lot of problems over complicating business, right? Business is not complicated. It's not easy, but it is simple, right? So simple three-step process for building the demand that drives the freedom that you want in your business, right? First step is you become visible. You make yourself visible. Second step is you invite people into a professional relationship with you. And the third step is you repeat this process daily, right? Third step is like rinse and repeat. By the way, inviting people to, into a professional relationship with you is code for selling, right? Because I could have said become visible, sell, and then rinse and repeat. But it's code for selling because people don't love the term selling. So I replace it with inviting. Inviting people to allow you into their health issue or their money issue or their business issue or that design challenge or their real estate opportunity or whatever, right? So three steps, become visible, invite, and repeat. This builds demand, which creates freedom. So I want to break it down. Become visible is step one. You want to identify what justifies your existence in your industry and put it on display. Now, as a person, I believe you're fully justified, right? Your existence is fully justified. But as a business, we have got to identify what justifies our existence. Bottom line is the market doesn't need another therapist or just another real estate agent or just another coach or just another lawyer. The truth is the, the market doesn't need just another anything, right? So you've got to identify why does your business exist? Why should somebody choose you over any other option that they have available to them? Where, what can they get from you that they can't get anywhere else, right? So becoming visible first requires you to identify what people can get from you they can't get anywhere else. And then you want to put that on display, right? You got to make it visible. If people don't know, then, you know, it's like um, the, the being the best in any industry. There's no marketable advantage to that unless you make it visible, right? Because people won't know that you're the best until they pay you and they might not pay because they don't know you're the best, right? We have to put what... Um, makes us unique, we have to put it on display. How do you put your unique service to the world on display? How do you make it visible? Well, that's really up to you. I use all of the following, right? I write, I use video, I do media interviews, I write for the media, I become the media, I align myself with other leaders, and I show up with them both online and 
off. I deliberately align myself with other leaders and I have live events. But these are just some of the options, some of the ways that I put uh, my twisted little view of business on display so that other crazy driven women can say, hey, that's me. She's saying what I'm thinking and this makes sense to me. And they and they kind of um, join in the Women Who Wow movement. But these are just some of the options. You can also use uh, audio, art, graphics, photo um, photography. You can use storytelling. I um, once worked with a woman who decided to uh, create all her content in, with poetry, right? It was it was pretty brilliant, and that's what came na uh, naturally to her. Um, you can use those virtual events and summits, although I do not recommend um, doing it the way everybody else does it, right? It's kind of tired and uh, losing effectiveness, but you can certainly have an online event or an online summit that is, you know, has your unique twist on it and make it really profitable. There are infinite number of ways um, to put your why buy for me over anywhere else uh, answer on display. So you just want to choose something that doesn't feel like work. And I'll tell you why we're going to, why you need to do that in just a second. So the first step is becoming visible. And not just showing up, like really being deliberate about showcasing what makes you so different, showcasing why people should buy from you over any other option. So that's what you want to make visible, right? The second step is that selling or we'll call it inviting people into a professional relationship with you. Now, some people feel squeamish about um inviting people to say yes to you. Some people feel squeamish about selling. And so I want you to imagine this for just a second. You are on stage and you're talking to a room of teenage girls about self-esteem and self-worth. Or you're in a room and you're talking to a bunch of business owners about why they're not making the money that they want. Or you're in a room with desperate moms searching for hope for an addicted child, right? And this room is listening to it and they're hanging on to your word and they're nodding their heads and you, whatever you're saying is encouraging them and empowering them and giving them hope and excitement and they are like all, you know, into it, nodding, nodding with everything that you say, you're helping them, right? And the truth is you would never just walk off stage or, you know, put down the, uh, you know, the phone or, or whatever without telling them how to get more information, right? Cause you wouldn't want to leave them where they were all excited, but they're not sure about what this next step is. You wouldn't leave them hanging like that. It's just not what we do. You would say, I can help you. Right? If you've been agreeing with this stuff, if you know that you have the problem I'm talking about, I can help you message me for details. At least, at least you tell that audience where they could find you, where they might be able to find more information. Because making this sort of invite, it's easy, it's compassionate, and it's helpful. It keeps things flowing. It allows people who are saying, I love it, I get it, right? It allows them to know, hey, I can engage her and get a little bit more from her, right? I can engage her and go deeper into this uh, content or world or product or whatever, right? No matter what you're doing to make yourself visible, you need to put an invite at the end, right? Um, it can be inviting them into a program, inviting them to say yes to membership, or even just inviting them into a conversation about how you can help them. Right? Just letting them know that they can get more and how they can get more. Finally, the third step of building demand, and this is where I lose people. I get it, right? If I don't lose them with the invite, <laughs> I will lose people when I say, you got to repeat this daily, right? A lot of people do like weekly messaging and they, they like belabor it, right? Like they have like a fancy like video and they put it out once a week um, and or they do like a long post and they put it out once a week. A lot of people are doing weekly messaging if they're doing that but I can tell you that daily is the new weekly. Weekly is not enough, right? This is why however you choose to make your little brand of crazy visible, however you choose to do that must be fun and it must flow from you. It must feel easy to you because if you're going to do it to build demand where your market is hungry for more of you, right? If you're going to do it for that purpose, you're going to have to do it daily. Your business will absolutely be transformed when you have a daily commitment to these three steps, right? Putting what makes you unique, making it visible, putting it on display, 
inviting people closer and repeating this daily. The first thing you're going to notice is more attention, right? You're going to feel an energy shift. When you commit to showing up daily, you will find an energy shift that I can't really describe to you, but it's like um, when you're in the ocean and you start to feel like a big swell coming, you just, you don't have to see it, right? You feel it. You will feel a different energy. Part of that is you are coming to your market with a different energy, a different commitment, a bigger commitment, a more solid commitment. You are coming to them with a different energy, but you'll also feel more attention coming your way. You'll have, you'll have, um, you know, people commenting like more engagement. You'll have more likes. You'll have people coming back. You'll have more people messaging you. So the first thing you're going to notice is more attention. The second thing you're going to notice is more money because there's a little secret, right? To <laughs> business, right? Um, the secret is she who sells more makes more money, <laughs> right? This isn't rocket science, right? If you're selling every day, if you make a commitment to sell every day, to invite people into better relationship with you or more or deeper relationship with you every day, you're going to make more money. It's just the way it works. So that's the second thing you'll notice. The third thing you'll notice is more opportunities, more opportunities to up level, uh, more opportunities to uh, take the stage, more opportunities to get in front of the media, more opportunities to become a known thought leader. You've always known you're a thought leader, but more opportunities to show up as a thought leader. So that's the third thing. And then, of course, you will immediately start to notice more freedom. That will first come in less desperate pursuit of clients, right? Because clients are coming to you. You're going to start noticing less um, ambiguity and angst over your pricing because you get to charge what you want. You're going to notice a lot more freedom around how you show up. You'll, you'll come to a place where you feel like there's nothing you really have to do, but there's always something you can do, right? And you get to choose and have more freedom with how you show up, when you show up, where you show up, the rules that you've uh, created around your business. I, do, I hope you have rules around your business, like um, how people can have access to you and what your hours are and all of that. That's important. But so the first thing is more attention. Next is more money. Third is more opportunities, which will be leveraged money. And then of course, you're going to have all the freedom that you could want in your business. So again, um, simple three steps. When you do it, you'll notice all four of those things in that order. And if you have any questions, you can certainly post them below in the um, comments or you can private message me, m.me backslash women who wow. If um, you want information about joining women who wow, I have a really special Independence Day bonus for you. So message me, m.me backslash women who wow. And if you have been considering coming to New York City to meet with like small time media like the, uh, the editor in chief of Entrepreneur Magazine or the special projects uh, producer for CNN, or the producer for Rachel Ray, or the top producer for Dr. Oz, or the editor for Business Insider, Fox Business, Fox News, um, ABC. If you want to talk with me about that media event, um, we have a couple spaces left, so definitely message me about that. That's the end of July. So I hope this has been helpful to you guys. I hope you have an amazing 4th of July weekend, and or, or holiday, it's not the weekend. It feels like the weekend. Um, someone mentioned that to me. Um, we were at a restaurant yesterday. And uh, so I said, oh, you have a great weekend. And I was with my um, husband and his mom. So his mom's a, a retired school teacher. My husband is a school teacher. And he's like, oh, I mean, it, I'm sorry. It just feels like a weekend. I'm like, that's all right. All summer is weekend for them. <laughs> so hope you guys have a great uh, 4th of July celebration. Um, and again, thank you to our um, veterans and our reservists and our active duty. And share this this video with anyone who needs to simplify their business to build more demand and more freedom. And I am here if you need me. So just message me. I'll talk with you later. Bye.